Hello, I'm Mr. Polk and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'd like to talk about how to make pie dough and show you a couple different ways to set the pie dough up into shells so that we're ready to start making pies. Okay, so we're going to start with the bowl of our KitchenAid mixer and we're going to put in our flour and this is 20 ounces, 1 pound, 4 ounces of pastry flour. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add the salt and then it's a teaspoon and a half and then we're going to get this on the mixer. Once it's on the mixer, then we're going to cut in the fats. Okay, and you could do this by hand with a pastry blender or two forks or even put on a pair of gloves. And the whole idea is with pie dough, you want to cut in the fats um, because remember shortening is for shortening the strands of gluten. We want to cut in the fat and actually blend it in between the flour. And it's going to make this like cornmeal y kind of thing, but we don't want to take it too far. We still want uh, the fat to be in what we like to call pea size. So let's take a look at putting this on the mixer. Okay, so we have the flour and the salt going around and it's all blended. And then now what we'd like to do is add in our fats. So we want to incorporate those. So we're going to put in, we'll put in the vegetable shortening and then we'll put in the butter. And I use a combination because of the melting temperatures uh, the Crisco is going to give us a flakiness, but the butter is going to give us our flavor. So to cut in the KitchenAid mixer, I just put it on stir, and we're just going to let it go around. And this is doing the same as if you did it by hand, um, and you just put it had on a pair of gloves and put it in between your hands and rubbed it together, or you used a pastry blender or anything like that uh, that's going to, to cut the fats together. The idea is, is that it's as the, the beater is going around, and... and don't be tempted to take it up to two or three. Stir is fine. And we want to do this until the layers of fat, or the, the balls of fat rather, are about pea size. Meaning that we don't want it to look into a cornmeal. Because if we do it to a meal, that's going to make more of a mealy crust. Okay? We're going to try to make here a flaky crust. So what's going to happen is we want to let the chunks of fat. So when you roll it out, you'll have chunks of fat that are in between the flour and make for a nice flaky crust. So as you can see as it mixes around, I'm going to stop it, and we can see that we still have all of those little chunks of butter and fat in our dough. It, it started to take on kind of a, a cornmeal texture, but we have all of those chunks, and that's what we want. We don't want to take it to the point where you don't have any chunks left, you don't, you don't have that. We like to say, again, the fat is pea size. So now we'll take it to stir, and we want to add our water, and we want to be careful at this point. We don't want to overwork it. Um, this needs to be ice water, so I had a pitcher of ice water poured it in to uh, five to six ounces. It all depends on the dough and the day and everything. And the water needs to be ice cold. I'm going to start with about half of it. The water wants, you want the water ice cold because you don't want the butter to warm up. You want it to stay in those chunks. If it warms up, it'll melt in between. I'm going to go ahead and just put it all in. And what it's going to do is take it around just a couple times until it starts to look like a ball of dough. Once it looks like a ball of dough, okay, then you want to shut it down because you don't want to over mix it. Okay, so there's our dough and you can check it. You want it to be soft. Um, it shouldn't be dry and crumbly, but it shouldn't be wet e um, either. Be careful with adding for this recipe more than the six ounces because a lot of times the water can hide at the bottom. So let's go ahead and take a look at this on a board. So here you can see the dough as we took it out of the mixer. Um, you can then divide it if you wish. Uh, this is enough to do four single pies, um, or it was able to do a whole bunch of the smaller pies. And then what I like to do is cut it into whatever you're going to divide it into, and then just kind of mash it into like a disc, because that's the best shape to roll out. And then just take your ceram wrap and then cover it up. And here's the thing. Uh, the pie dough is not quite ready to go. You want to let it rest. Okay, the gluten's been overworked and everything at this point. You just want to let it rest, let it firm up a little bit, uh, maybe like a half hour or so in the refrigerator, and then you'll be able to come back and roll it out. So now here comes the fun part where we can roll it out. So whatever flour you made your dough with, in this case pastry flour, 
I like to put a little bit of pastry flour down on my surface. And here in the class, I like to use the silpats. At home, you know, you could use a wooden baking board, a cutting board, or a counter. A lot of people have different things that they like to use. And then put a little bit of the flour on top. And the first roll is just going to kind of roll it out like this. Okay. Then you're going to take it, pick it up. Always make sure there's flour underneath it. Otherwise, it's going to stick. And then I turned it over. And I kind of, you know, worked the edges a little bit here so nothing breaks. And things will break sometimes. And then we want to roll this way. Okay. And the whole idea is I'm going to go for about an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to roll it out like this. And this would be enough for like one nine inch pie. And then you got to, here's where you got to have a little faith. You just got to pick it up. Okay. Because you always need your dough to release. If it doesn't release, it's going to stick and it's not going to work for you. So a little more flour under there and I'm going to do a touch more on top. Okay. Not too much, but I don't want to stick to my rolling pin. And then I'm just going to roll it out this way to get to the size that I would need. And while I'm doing it, I'm always releasing. It's important that it doesn't stick to the, the board uh, no matter what board you're using. And here's the thing. If you do that, when you pick it up, it's going to shrink because the dough is going to relax. Um, you can use a, a bench scraper or a plastic bench scraper, but you have to make sure that it is totally released. Okay. Um, if it's not, it, it, like I said, when you cut it into a shape or pick it up, um, it's definitely I'm going to shrink. And you, you don't have to be afraid to work with the dough. Some people, you know, they're kind of afraid with it. Sometimes the students of mine say I'm a dough whisperer. But you just got to, you know, get in there and do what you got to do. Um, and then we're going to put it in the pan. If you're going to put it in a 9-inch pan, it'll go a little bit bigger. Here, what we're going to do is take a look at putting it into a small pan. One of my tricks that I find is I like to cut a circular piece of dough to fit into the pan, or if I put it into a large, like a nine inch pan, I cut around and leave about a half inch around. Now if I take this cutter that I made, and then I'll just kind of put this dough off to the side, and then I lift it up, and then I'm gonna put it into the pan. And when you do this, it's almost like uh, working with, with fondant with cakes, is you wanna press it into the bottom of the pan and then press it over without having any cracks or anything like that. Um, get it into, as we joke, the corners of the pan, even though it's round, but that intersection, get it, get it in there. And then this is what I think really makes for a nice crust, is a lot of people want to just cut it, you know, I was like, I know what to do, I just cut right around. You want to roll, and it doesn't have to be pretty, because no one's going to see it, is you do this, this tuck and roll that I'm doing, okay? And what it's going to do is it's going to double up the crust a little bit. Okay. And then once it's rolled, then you can go ahead and you can do your crimp. So you see how now I have something to work with. And if I didn't have one of these fancy cutters, I'd lay it in and I would you know, cut it around about a half inch. And then you, a lot of people crimp different ways. I like to use these two little guys and then either a finger or a thumb. I got big bear paws here, so I a lot of times just use the finger to kind of go behind it. And all you're doing is pinching and turning, okay, the pinch. And as you do that, it's going to make just a really nice classic fluting on your pie shell, okay. And then a couple tricks is, let's say this guy was going to go for pumpkin pie, all right. I would mix up egg whites. I'd take my eggs, separate them, uh, and have the whites. Add a touch of water, about a tablespoon of water for every egg white. Mix them together and then brush them on the edges here. And then that's going to allow them to shine a little bit when it goes in the oven and then pour my pie in. If I needed to blind bake this, let's say I was making a lemon meringue or something that needed a pre-cooked shell, then you would make sure you dock the bottom. Okay? Just use a fork, put some holes in the bottom. That's going to compress the, the, the gluten strands together and it won't puff up so much. And then I would brush the edges, and then uh, if you're going to blind bake, meaning bake it first, I always like to put pie weights in. And a trick that I find for that is with a large pie, you can use a piece of parchment paper. But for the smaller pie, I like to just put these little guys, these little four inch. I like to do just a, about a half cup of beans, and then I bring them up like this, 
into this little pouch and then this little pouch here fits right inside there real nice and holds it and you bake it for about 10 minutes or so 375 and then you take this out because it holds the crust in but it holds all the steam in too so then you you take it out and then you bake it a little bit longer and allow it to brown and because you put some egg wash on the top it's going to look great so that's the the thing with pie dough is you just got to you got to mix it don't use too much water don't overwork it really cut the fats in there use my recipe with a blend of fats a little bit of the crisco there for for the flakiness but at the same time you also have um, some of the butter there for flavor uh, and then you know don't be afraid when you roll it out about an eighth of an inch don't make it too thick try to cut it bigger than the pie pan to tuck it under and then do the crimp so there you go you can see how you can make pie dough and make some shells okay so thanks for baking with me today and I can't wait to bake with you real soon right here in Mr. Polk's kitchen.